This is B&H, and in this video, we'll show you how to create fake ice cream for photo or video shoots. In these hot summer months, you may be motivated to make some creative images of ice cream. Working with real ice cream can be difficult, especially in this hot weather since it melts so easily. Fake ice cream is a simple solution that gives real looking results that hold for an entire photo session. For today's shoot, I'll create a few scoops of vanilla ice cream in a cone with sprinkles on top. The base of the ice cream is actually frosting and you can use any store-bought frosting. I have a white frosting for a vanilla ice cream look and chocolate frosting for a chocolate ice cream. The fake ice cream base is simply frosting mixed with powdered sugar to create a dough that mimics the look of real ice cream. Elmer's glue mixed with the base can create some melted parts that are dripping from the cone. To get started, I'll create a base to hold the ice cream cone in place. I took an empty salsa jar and filled it with water to give it some weight. Since the fake ice cream can get very top-heavy, I placed a chopstick into an old funnel and used a hot glue gun to attach the funnel to the salsa jar. This isn't exactly rocket science engineering. Anything heavy that you can glue a stick to will work for this part. I bit off the bottom of the ice cream cone to create an opening so it can fit onto the chopstick. The chopstick should stick out of the top of the cone a bit. This will be used to place the scoops onto. Using the hot glue gun, I applied a generous layer of hot glue on the outside and inside of the cone so it attaches to the chopstick. I filled the cone with bits of paper towels to keep the chopstick centered. You want to pack it with as much as you can since the fake ice cream scoops will rest upon the cone and it won't be going into the cone. I took a sheet of paper towel and crumpled it into a ball to place on top of the cone. This gives a general idea of where the ice cream scoops will rest, which will allow you to frame up on your shot before ever placing the scoops. Overall, my shooting setup is very simple. I have my DSLR on a tripod, which is tethered to my laptop. I like shooting tethered so I could see the raw images on a much larger screen and see any details that may need to be adjusted. For this shoot, I'm using my 100mm macro lens, which is one of my favorite lenses to use for products and other still life shots. I place the cone setup on a small table, which has a foam core folded and placed next to it. I taped a piece of blue construction paper to the foam core, which allows the foam core to function as both a backdrop and a fill light. I'm using two lights for this setup, one softbox placed to the right of the cone and slightly behind, which will give a highlight on the rim of the cone. The light from this softbox will bounce off the foam core and fill the front with very soft light. The second light is pointed at the backdrop to give a circular gradient effect on the blue backdrop. For this effect, a snoot works best, but since I didn't have one available, I actually made one. I used two grid reflectors that are held together by A-clamps, and I made a cylinder with aluminum foil to funnel the light into a small circular shape. While this is not a permanent modifier, it does work well in a pinch. Making the fake ice cream is very simple. I used a large bowl and poured in the white frosting. Add in the powdered sugar a few scoops at a time and mix it together. This can be done in a food processor or a blender if you want, but I find doing it by hand works just fine. You're looking for a thicker consistency, almost like a dough, but you don't want it too thick or too dry. As you're mixing it, you want to pay attention to the way the dough reacts to being broken apart. Real ice cream has texture when it's scooped, with a bark-like appearance on the outside as it tears apart. You want the dough to have the same kind of consistency. When I finished with the dough, I put it in a container and flattened it out. I found that sticking it in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes helps it to thicken up. After removing from the freezer, I used an ice cream scoop to make my first scoop. I have a tray lined with plastic wrap so I can do multiple scoops and keep them in the tray. You want to use a solid scooper instead of the ice cream scoops with the scraper inside which pushes the scoop out, since it can mess up the shape of the scoop. For the scoop, you want to do a long motion across the container and have the dough curl into the scoop. There's going to be some bits that protrude from the side. This is fine, you want to keep these because they add to the overall shape of the scoop. I have my first scoop ready and to be transferred to the tray. Sometimes the scoop can stick so it takes a few whacks on the tray for it to come out. Looking at the first scoop, it has a nice overall shape. You want that nice large oval with the protruding sides from the side, which looks like one large generous scoop of ice cream. The top of the scoop is a bit too smooth, but we could do some work to it to give it more texture. Here's another scoop I did with just the oval and no dough protruding from the sides. You can see that when it's just an oval, it's pretty shapeless and it's not as inviting as the other scoop. Having the side pieces protruding out give it a better, more appetizing shape. I'll make several scoops and place them in the tray so I can pick some of the best ones to use for the image. I made a few scoops, and while they do look like real ice cream scoops, 
they still appear to be too doughy and smooth. I want to dress these up a bit to look more realistic. First, I'll take one of the larger scoops and carefully place it on the top of the cone. The chopstick will stick through the scoop and it'll help hold it in place. This first scoop will sit right on the top of the cone, which will be covering the opening. I place this one to hang off the front a little bit. The top of the scoop looks very smooth and too fake, so I'll take a kitchen knife and I'll carefully drag it along the surface of the scoop. This will break open the surface and create that natural bark texture that you want, which makes it look more like real ice cream. You can do this on the top of the scoop and to the side pieces as well, in areas that might look too smooth or flat, and it'll help break open the surfaces and add to the texture. With some texture added to the first scoop, I'll add the second scoop on top. For the second scoop, I like to offset it from the first and have it turn to another direction so it looks more dynamic. I use the knife to create more texture on this scoop and the sides. Sometimes when you're handling the scoop, you'll flatten certain parts of it, so this is the time to fix any mistakes. You'll notice that the dough is a little dry and cracking along the sides of the scoop. This is okay since we're going to add some glue to give the scoop some moisture to look more natural. In a cup, I put a scoop of the dough and added some Elmer's glue. The glue is pure white in color, so you want to use some of the dough to bring the color of the dough back into the glue. Stir this around until you get a nice smooth and elastic dough. You don't want to add too much glue since it'll thin out the mixture, just enough to form some drips. Since the dough is dry and it's matte in texture, I took a small amount of glycerin and brushed it gently around the scoops. This will add some moisture and it'll glisten in the light to look less flat. Real ice cream starts turning to liquid on the surface very quickly, so this will mimic that effect. I put the dough and glue mixture into a syringe, and I added small globs of the liquid to the sides of the scoop. This will give the appearance that the ice cream is slowly melting. When adding the drops with the syringe, you want to just put a little bit at a time and gently pull back the drip over the edges of the scoop. The glue and dough mixture is very viscous, and the drops will hang off the scoops. This is perfect for keeping the prop in the same position for hours if necessary. You don't want to overdo it with the glycerin or the drips, just enough to give it a more realistic appearance. The moisture can affect the bark texture on the dough, so you can keep scraping it with a knife to open the surface back up. With the moisture added to the scoops, I'll finish it off with some colorful sprinkles. I placed a bunch of sprinkles onto a plate, and using tweezers, I put the sprinkles around the scoops. Now, you can pour the sprinkles on the top if you want, but I prefer to control where the sprinkles go exactly. I didn't want them bunched up in certain areas, and I wanted a variety of colors sparsely around the scoop. The sprinkles are placed, and the ice cream is ready to be photographed. Everything is set up and ready to go. I simply placed the ice cream on the table and rotated it to the angle I wanted to shoot. I have the foam core standing to the side of the ice cream for fill, but the front needs just a little bit more. I used a sheet of white paper and I held it as close to the ice cream as I could while shooting. I kept the syringe handy to add more globs of dripping ice cream, as well as some extra sprinkles to add any in case any fell off. The shooting process was very simple since it's a static shot of the ice cream. The only thing I worked on between shots was the placement of the sprinkles and the drops of ice cream. This is a simple setup meant for a straightforward still of the ice cream, but it's flexible enough to allow for a variety of backgrounds using different sheets of paper. Now let's move on to the editing. I have two shots of the vanilla ice cream I really liked. One with a nice sprinkle arrangement, and another that has a good looking part dripping off the side. I want to use the image with the sprinkle arrangement as the main image, and then I'll composite in the drip of ice cream. I did some basic edits in Camera Raw, just some white balance, contrast, and tweaks. With my main sprinkle image loaded in Photoshop, the first edit I want to do is make some adjustments to the background. When I was shooting, I used a strobe with a makeshift snoot to create a light gradient on the blue background. I want to adjust this slightly in post so the gradient is more centered on the scoops of ice cream. Pressing W opens the magic wand tool, which I'll use to make selections on the background. When I want to make quick selections for a quick mask, the magic wand tool always works best on images like this, where the background is generally one tone and easily separated from the subject. I made selections all around the background, ensuring it selects all the bits of the blue background. When I'm making selections like this, I like to save them for future use, so I keep them stored as paths. First, I right-clicked and pressed Select Inverse from the drop-down menu. This will invert the selection so it's only selecting the ice cream and cone. I'm inverting the selection because I want to have the save selection only focused on the ice cream and not the background. I'll right-click again and press Make Work Path which will change the selection to a path. There's a feathering option, which I like to keep around one pixel. Now that we have a path selecting the ice cream, 
Just hit the symbol in the corner of the path window to open the drop-down menu and select Save Path. This seems like a few extra steps, but I like doing this whenever I make a selection or a path in an image, so it's saved for future use, in case I want to isolate the subject or put it on a different background, or maybe I'll composite it somewhere else down the line. With the path set, I'll make a new layer with just the ice cream isolated. Select the background layer and press Ctrl J to duplicate the layer. Select the path and press the dotted circle symbol on the path window to generate a selection. I'll make the selection into a mask by pressing the mask symbol in the layer window. Now the ice cream is isolated on its own layer. Next, I created a new layer and placed it underneath the ice cream layer. I'll create a gradient on this layer. Press G to open the gradient tool and open the gradient editor, selecting the background to foreground. I like using the background to foreground gradient when I'm making color selections from the image. Holding the Alt key, I made a color selection from the background on one of the darker areas. Press X to swap the background and foreground colors and hold Alt to make another color selection on one of the lighter blue areas. I want the lighter blue to be closer to a white blue, so click the blue selection to open the color picker. I'll slide it over to a lighter area on the blue hue, closer to the white area on the left. With the color set, I selected the radial gradient tool, which can be found on the top of the screen. I want the white to be the center of the gradient with the darker blue radiating out from the center. With the blank layer underneath the ice cream selected, click an area centered on the ice cream and drag out the edge of the frame. If the gradient comes out backwards, you can simply press reverse on the toolbar. I dragged a few different gradients to get the general shape and gradient that I want, giving a slight halo around the scoop of the ice cream. You can see the difference between the original background and the new gradient when toggling them back and forth. I still want to keep some of the original background information, so I lowered the opacity on the gradient layer to bring back some of that original information. The purpose of the gradient layer is to add some light halo effect around the scoops and increase the separation from the background. I duplicated the background layer again and placed the layer underneath the gradient layer. For this layer, I want to add some Gaussian blur to blur out some of the detail from the construction paper in the background. Construction paper has a very distinct looking texture that I want to tone down a bit. I used the same path to make a mask on the new layer, then inverted the mask so only the background shows. Selecting the layer, I selected Gaussian Blur from the drop-down menu under Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I only want a slight blur on the background, so I used a blur radius of 3.5 pixels. With the background set, it's time to do some general cleanup on the scoops and cone. I'll make a new layer and use this as my clean layer. There's some small hairs and dust that ended up on the scoops, so I'll use the Clone Stamp tool to remove this. The Clone Stamp tool is perfect for repeating textures, like on the ice cream cone. There's some cracks on the sprinkles, so I used the Clone Stamp tool to clean those up as well. One of the sprinkles was broken, and it had a jagged edge on the break. Selecting the layer with the ice cream cone, I used the Lasso tool to make a general selection around the other end of the sprinkle. I copied and pasted the selection into a new layer so it could be used to repair the broken sprinkle. Use Ctrl T to open the Free Transform tool, which allows you to rotate the layer and make any size adjustments. I moved the layer into place, then made a layer mask. I inverted the layer mask to make the layer disappear, then painted the area back in with the brush tool on the layer mask. I used the clone stamp tool to blend the two layers together so the fix on the sprinkle looks more natural. Now I want to composite in the ice cream drip from the other image. I pressed Ctrl A to select the entire canvas, then copied and pasted the entire image into a layer. I applied a layer mask to the layer, then inverted the mask to make the layer disappear. I used the brush tool to paint back the drip. I just did a general pass over the drip to bring back that information, but some of the blue background from the other image is on top of the new background I made. On the drip layer, I used the magic wand tool to select the blue and used the brush tool to remove that area from the layer mask. This was a very simple composite used to add some detail to the image. With the image cleaned up, I did some general contrast and exposure tweaks with the curves layer. Crop the image, and it's all set. We have a pretty good image of an ice cream cone that looks fairly natural with the dripping ice cream. Critiquing this image, at first glance, it looks like a real scoop of ice cream on a cone. In some bits, you can tell that it's a dough and not real ice cream, but the drips do help to disguise this. I think I went a little overboard on the glycerin on the scoops. The scoops look moist, but the dough lost some of the bark texture, which we need more of in this image. I did another shot with the chocolate frosting to create a chocolate ice cream. This time I didn't use the glycerin, so the surface appears dry. 
The chocolate frosting handled very different than the white frosting. I think because of the cocoa powder in the frosting. And when I mixed it with the glue, it dried much faster, so the drips look more solid than the milky drips on the white scoops I made. Getting the consistency of the dough is crucial for this, but you could use other items to make fake ice cream, like mashed potatoes. Now, let's talk ethics for a moment. In the commercial world, making fake ice cream for an advertisement would be completely unacceptable. When advertising a product, especially food, you're required to use real ingredients. So this begs the question, why fake ice cream? Well, let's say you're advertising the sprinkles, the cone, or maybe even a chocolate syrup. Since those items are the focus of the advertisement, it would actually be okay to use a fake ice cream, though a food stylist or photographer may prefer the real thing anyway. A prop like this with fake ice cream would work if you were shooting and needed a prop ice cream in the background that wasn't going to melt instantly. There are certain situations where using this would be acceptable, but know that it does not apply for straight commercial work. More than anything, it's a fun DIY project that you can try at home if you want to get into the groove of shooting food work, but you don't want to deal with the messy melting ice cream just yet. This is B&H, and if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.